All right, in this video, we're going to go over, we're going to go over simplifying trig expressions. Okay, so remember, an expression does not have an equal sign. Okay, an equation that has an equal sign, an expression does not. All right, so to simplify these trig expressions, the first thing you the first thing you want to try to do is convert anything that is not sine or cosine into sines or cosines. All right. Then, try to get rid of the fractions if you can, and lastly, factor out common terms, okay? So let's look at this example. We have the sine of x times the cosine squared of x minus the sine of x, okay? The first thing we want to do here, okay, is try to convert anything into, into sines or cosines. Well, if you look, we're already in sines or cosines. So we don't need to do that. Next, try to get rid of fractions. Don't have any fractions. Lastly, factor out common terms. What's common about both about both sides of the minus sign? They both have a sine x. So we can factor out the sine x. Now on the left side, we're left with cosine squared. Minus on the right side, sine divided by sine is 1. Remember, nothing ever disappears. Okay? So in this case, we factored out the sine, but it didn't go away. Okay, sine divided by sine is one. We have to have a placeholder. Easy way to tell if you did it if you factored it out right. Multiply it back through. Make sure you can get this. Sine times cosine squared is sine x cosine x. Sine times negative one is negative sine. So we know we factored it out right because we multiply it back together. It works. Now, if you notice, this cosine squared minus one. Okay, if you remember the golden rule. GR, golden rule, you know that sine squared plus cosine squared equaled 1. I'm abbreviating. All right, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Well, if you subtract the cosine squared from both sides, okay, you will notice that the sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared, but we don't have that. We have cosine squared minus 1. Well, if you multiply both sides by negative 1, you get negative sine squared equals, okay, 1 times negative cosine squared is cosine squared, and then negative 1 times 1 is minus 1. So now, this here, cosine squared minus 1, is what we have here. Well, that equals negative sine. Okay, so we have the sine x, and that's going to equal negative sine squared x. Okay, so now we have the sine x times the negative sine squared of x. So now we just simply multiply those together to get negative sine cubed of x. And that is our final answer. You would just leave it like that. You wouldn't try to simplify any further. In fact, you can't simplify that any further. All right. Let's look at another example. Let's simplify tangent squared x minus tangent squared x times sine squared x. First thing you want to do, try to put everything in sines or cosines. Well, here, if we actually put tangent in terms of sines and cosines, it wouldn't actually help us with the problem. So if you want to look at this as tangent is already in terms of sine and cosine, because it is sine divided by cosine, We'll just leave the tangent alone for this one. And we have no fractions, so now factor out. Okay. Factor out the tangent squared x, leaving you with a 1 minus sine squared x. Okay. Now, again, if you remember the golden rule, okay, we know that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Well, if you subtract the sine squared from both sides, we know that cosine squared equals 1 minus sine squared, which is what we have here. So, therefore, tangent squared of x times the cosine squared of x is our next step, okay, because this converts to that. Now, now let's convert this to terms of sine and cosine. So, tangent squared is, of course, sine squared x over cosine squared x. And then that is times cosine squared of x. Okay? Now, if you remember, this is over an imaginary 1, and now we multiply straight across. 
Well, before we multiply straight across, we can cancel out the cosines, leaving us with just the sine squared of x. Okay? So you kind of see the pattern here. We're simplifying them down. Right? If you want, you could put in terms, you could put this in terms of x and y. Sometimes that can help. But when you get down to like 1 minus sine squared, of course, that won't help. Okay, so... But sometimes, like I said, especially if it helps sometimes for factoring out if you want to do it that way. Then after you factor it out, just put back in what you substituted for x or y, okay, if that helps. Some people it might help, some people you might be like, well, why would I even do that? Okay, if, if you think it'll help you, try it. If you don't think it'll help you, don't worry about it. Okay. Now, this next one, I'm going to give you as a you try. All right, and this is actually where we're going to end the video. I'm going to have you try this. I'm going to go over and show you how to do it. And this is where we're going to end the video, and I'll give you some problems to work on this tomorrow in class. So the first thing we want to do is terms of sine and cosine. So this right here will go to 1 over cosine. Okay, so sine squared x times 1 over cosine squared x minus sine squared x. Okay, well, we can't get rid of this fraction because it's secant squared, but what we can do is we can factor out a sine. Okay, and that leaves us with the 1 over cosine minus 1. Well, if you notice, 1 over cosine is secant, and secant minus 1 is one of our true identities. Okay, so I'm actually going to leave this as secant squared. Okay, and then, of course, sine, pull a sine out, you get minus 1. Well, if you remember, your tangent squared plus 1 equals your secant squared. So if you minus 1, minus 1, okay, secant squared minus 1 equals tangent squared. So your sine squared x is going to be multiplied by your tangent squared of x. Okay, and now that I think about it, I don't think I paused and gave you time to do this, but... This is how you work it out anyway. Now, you could leave it at this step if you wanted to, and most people would, but if you wanted to try to bring it down even further, you could do the sine squared of x, and then tangent is sine squared x over cosine squared x. Okay, multiply the numerators, and that would get you sine to the fourth of x over cosine squared of x. Alright, well like I said, most people would just leave it as in this step right here, which is completely fine, because the, you can't really use your identities, okay, you can't use your golden rule, things like that, and if you use your um, quotient identity that the tangent squared is the sine squared over cosine squared, you end up with sine to the fourth over cosine squared. Like I said, either way is fine, wouldn't count either of them wrong. But, I, but at a minimum, I would want you to get to this step at a minimum. If you want to keep going, more power to you. But at a minimum, I would want this as your answer. Okay? So, that has been your trig identities. Your simplifying trig expressions, I mean. So, make sure you understand this video and how to do this. And I'll give you some problems on this tomorrow. See you tomorrow.